Hey guys, what's here? Welcome back to C++ Multi-Threading. In the last video, we got our futures and our tasks all working up with our thread pool. Everything is nice. Now let's break it. Let's see what happens when your task throws an exception. So here, every basically every fourth task is going to throw an exception. And if we run an ad, what do you expect to see? All right, so I set it up so that basically every fourth task that we spawn is going to throw an exception. And if we run it, let's start without debugging. We see we get the first one printed and then it just freezes. And if we wait for a little while, eventually the process dies with a nasty exit code. So here's the thing about exceptions. Uh, as you know, if you don't catch them, they go up to the top level and escape your program is terminated. One interesting thing though is that that's not just for your main thread. If any thread in your program leaks an exception, the whole process is taken down. And that's meant by design, right? Unlike error codes, which you can drop on the floor and forget, exceptions are meant to be made such that you cannot ignore them. So what do we do here? Well, you might think I'm gonna catch that exception. I'm gonna catch it. The place I wanna catch it is right here. So we're gonna run through, we're gonna get our futures, we're gonna catch any exceptions that arise from our tasks and everything will be fine, right? Let's just run with the uh, debugger attached and we get unhandled exception. Of course we do. Why would you ever expect this to work? The actual execution of the task is happening on a different thread than the thread that is getting the result. That's the whole point. So if we want to catch exceptions, we have to catch them in the worker thread that is executing the task. And it's not too complicated. I mean, you'd want to put your try catch right here in the actual task wrapping here with the promise stuff and in the, in the hoo-ha and the whatnot. So yeah, we just put our try catch in here. And if we do this, if we catch it in the task here, we find it sort of works, but then it stops working. It just kind of freezes here. Uh, so, and also, I mean, it's really messing up our output, but uh, besides that fact, freezing the program, probably not the best. And it doesn't take too much thinking to realize what's going on here. Essentially, when we get this exception, we're not setting anything on our promise. And so now our main thread gets stuck waiting for promises that are never fulfilled. So obviously when there's an exception, we can't just ignore the promise. We've got to set something on the promise. That's problem A. Now problem B is that you probably don't want to have one fixed response for an exception. Uh, no matter what task you throw at it. The, the ideal scenario is just like a normal function, uh, like with a normal function, you call the function, you get a value out. If there is an exception, you get an exception out. So we would like to get the exception at the point where we invoked the function. We would like to get our exception from here when we call get. So what we have to do is something called marshalling, which is a fancy word meaning, you know, ushering some data between from one context to another. Uh, and so we want to usher this exception that comes out of here. We want to capture it. We want to put it in a bottle and then we want to teleport it to the, the thread that was actually ordered the task. Now, the tricky thing here is, OK, so, well, let's say we we capture const std exception and e well then we have this thing we could copy the value of that and store it in the promise so that it can be bubbled it can be thrown again uh when we call get but there's no guarantee that the task will throw a std exception or a type that derives from std exception it might not even throw a class type it might throw an int it could throw a bool it could throw anything uh, and we can't write like catch 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 for every possible thing that could be thrown because there is no limit to that list. But if we do have a way of catching any exception, that's with the dot dot dot, but then we don't have we don't have an e to copy from to marshal. So we find ourselves in a bit of a conundrum, but luckily the C++ language and the standard library has got your back. So, they have a type called std exception pointer and it can basically act as a pointer or a container for any exception thrown, no matter what the type. Uh, and so what can you do with the uh, exception pointer? You can't call what on it. 
You can't check any of its values. You can't do anything except for one very crucial thing, which is you can rethrow it. So there's a function called std current exception that gets an exception pointer of the exception that's currently being processed. You store that in an exception pointer variable, and when you go to a different context, you can rethrow that exception, and then it can be caught in a context where maybe the handler will have a way of understanding what kind of exceptions are going to come out and how to handle them properly. So I think the way forward is pretty clear. Uh, we need a way on our promise not only to set the value, but to set an exception in the case of an exception. So in our promise, or actually in our shared state, which is the thing that stores results, we also need to store an exception pointer. Now here's the thing. Uh, our shared state will either have a result or an exception or neither, but it will never have both of them. And so it's a little redundant to have a separate result and exception when it can never have both of these at the same time. Uh, it's okay, it's be fine to make it like that, but here's an opportunity to introduce to you another cool thing. And that thing is called std variant. Variant is a type safe union. So a union type, I don't know if I've ever gone over those in the series, but a union type is a type where you can overlay different data types in the same memory space. And so we can say this thing, this variant can be, or this union can either be an int or a float or a bool. It can be one of those things at different times, but never both of them at the same time. So now let's make a std variant and we have to list what are the possibilities for the variant. Well, our variant can hold a type T if it's holding a result, or it can hold a std exception pointer if it's holding an exception. Now, T is optional because there is also the possibility that no result has been uh, yet yielded, right? And a variant cannot be empty. It has to have one of its options active. But there is an option called std monostate, which acts as like an empty state. So you put that in there and this, is, this will act like you're empty. And it will default to the first one. So it'll start off in this state. And we'll call this the result. So your result can be not yet yielded, or it can be a T, or it can be an exception. And one of the beautiful things about the variant is you can assign to it just like you would assign to, you know, a T or an exception pointer. So this line here actually just stays the same. Uh, now with the std optional, you can use just you can use it as a boolean to check whether it holds a value or not. You can't do that with a variant, but what we can do is we can check to see if it holds a monostate. So we only want to set if it's empty, and it's only empty if it holds a monostate. So we do std holds alternative std mono state, and then result. And there you go. So if it is empty, then we set it. Now for get, uh, we're going to return a T. So we do std move, std get, and the type we want to get from the variant is a type T. And that'll return a reference to our T, and that'll be moved out of. And so if the result for some strange reason is not holding a T, we got our logic mixed up, this will actually, the, the standard library will pick this up and it'll throw an exception for us. And that will alert us to, you know, errors that we might not otherwise realize in time. But here's the thing. When we acquire the signal, we can only pass when the result has been set. It could have been set with T, but it's also possible that it was set with an exception. So we should check for that. So we'll do if auto P P exception, pointer to a pointer to exception. So std get if exists, and this will actually get us a pointer to whatever's held in the result if it's holding that thing. So you can do holds alternative and get all at once if you use get if. So we gotta put uh, the address of the result. And so if it's actually holding an exception pointer, this will be this pointer will be filled. And then what we wanna do is we wanna do std rethrow exception, right? And this is going to be called 
from the context of the main thread, right? And it's at this point, if it were, there was an exception held in the result, this is where it would be rethrown, it would be bubbled up, and now it can be caught here, which is where we want to catch it. Now we also have to fix the shared state of void. This one, because you can't hold both a value and an exception, there's no reason to use variant here. So we'll just keep the bool flag plus exception pointer. And we're gonna put an overload of set here. So we have set that takes nothing. We have one that takes an exception pointer. And it's mostly the same, except we assign p exception. That's the only difference. And then here in get after we acquire, we're gonna check to see if we have a p exception. And if so, we're gonna rethrow that bad boy. All right, and there you go, there it is all done. And here's a little beautiful thing, a little side effect I like to show you. Because of the way exceptions work, where they bubble up, we can add all this error marshalling and stuff, and we don't actually have to touch future at all. We, even though we added all this stuff in, future doesn't change, and it still propagates through the future get into the caller because that's the way exceptions work. You don't have to you know, babysit them every intermediate step up the chain, unlike error codes, which you definitely have to do. All right, so now the place where we actually catch the exception to marshal it, here is where the important stuff happens. And what we're gonna do is when we catch, we're gonna do promise.set, and we're gonna do std current exception. So we capture, we get a pointer to the exception that is currently being processed when we got this catch, and we set that on the promise. And just like this set where we set a value, this one will also release anyone waiting on the result of that future. And now because we're iterating over these futures in order, we should see a very orderly, every fourth one of these should print out yikes. And let's just test that hypothesis. And there you go, just like clockwork, Value, 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 yikes, value, 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 yikes, 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 yikes. There you go. We've done it. We've marshaled exceptions across threads, uh, ushering them to the place where they will have meaning and where they can perhaps be handled appropriately. All right, let me run this scenario by you here. We've got this task here. It's going to take some time to complete, then it's going to return a value. And when it returns that value, we want to print that value out. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for that value, we want to do other things. And uh, let's say we don't actually know how long it's going to take, so we don't really know how long we have to do other things. What we would like to be able to do is periodically check the future to see if the value is available yet before we get it. Because if we just call get, we're stuck waiting, even if we still have to wait 10 seconds, 10 days, doesn't matter. So we like to be able to check it without blocking. So for example, um, maybe what we'd like to do is just update a UI periodically while we're waiting for this future until it's ready and then we can, you know, use the value somehow. But we need a way of checking. So let's say we want like a little function on the future called ready that returns a bool when it's ready. Well, essentially what we want to do is in this shared state, we want a way of checking the ready signal without blocking. And we can do that. So let's do make a function bool ready. And so we can do return ready signal dot try acquire. And that will return true if it's possible to acquire the signal. Uh, now there's a problem with this. It will also, if it is possible, it will acquire the signal, which if you think about it, it makes sense. Otherwise you'd end up with race conditions. Um, you could check it and then it says, yeah, it's ready. And then you try to acquire it. But in that meanwhile, someone else acquired it before you and your result of checking was useless. So when you try acquire, if it's impossible, it returns false and that's fine. But if it is possible, it returns true and it acquires it. Meaning that after that, if you call get, you will block for in for eternity, which is not good. So what we actually want to do. So if the signal is available and we acquire it, let's just release it right then and there. And this is fine for us because we have the the uh, constraint that there's only one person who can be using this future. So there isn't multiple people who can grab this thing. So we'll release it if our try succeeds and then we will return true. Otherwise we will return false. There you go. So now this will need, obviously promise doesn't care about readiness. The promise is the one who sets the readiness. I am the one who knocks. But this guy 
Future, Future does need to have an interface to forward that call to the shared state. And then this should be good, this call right here. And we should have our ability to pull the future. Okay, here it comes. Waiting, 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 waiting. And task ready. There you go. So, very nice. We now have the ability to marshal exceptions from our tasks. And we have the ability to pull our futures for their ready status. Very nice. All in a good day's work. And I think that's enough for today. So, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ multi-threading.